Hello everybody, I hope you're all doing well and welcome to another video. So, this is a video which I received quite a few requests for and it was after I showed off this command base for my first crusade project. I had quite a lot of people ask me how I did it or would there be any kind of painting guide or an update on it. Now my original plan was just to include it in one of my project updates but I did film the process of doing this so after a Thinking for a little while, I thought, why not? I'll share with you how I did it and show you all the painting process and all of that. So it's going to be quite a long video and I go into all the paints that I used and um, I'll show you how I put the whole thing together. Okay, so here we have all of the prints. Now these are 3D prints and these are all from Reconquer Designs. Those of you who watch the channel will know that I do really enjoy Reconquer Designs and the miniatures um, that Macross sculpts. And this is the St. Ramos miniature um, and uh, one of the Villainos responding miniatures. I'll leave links to all of these down below along with a complete paint list as well of everything I'm going to use. And basically I needed a new command base for my Crusaders and I quite like the pose here of the servant handing the helmet up to his mounted master. I thought the servant could be holding a banner and you've got the other guy in the background, another retainer, getting on his horse. So I have printed all of these in Soriatek ABS Navy Resin using my Anycubic, Anycubic Mono 6 and uh, I'm really really pleased with this 3D printer, I really like how it comes out. So once all of the miniatures are cleaned up and they've been cured, I undercoated them with a Chaos Black GW spray and then I Xenophor highlight them with matte white from Colorforge, just hitting it from above or at a slight 45 degree angle. I start by painting the horses and for this horse I decided to make a sort of a nice chestnut coloured horse so I'm using the Gore Grunter Fur contrast paint which is one of my favourites and I liberally apply this across all of the areas of the horse flesh. The second horse I decided I wanted a nice sort of sandy colour so I use uh, Skeleton Horde again another contrast paint and I thin this down about 50-50 with contrast medium and I do it in two coats. Once it's dried, I go back to the original horse and I put black Templar all over the mane and the tail. And then I use Gore Grunter Fur for the mane and the tail on the sort of sandy coloured horse, which just gives it sort of a nice contrast between, um, you know, the base colour. Sometimes you can, you know, go a little bit wild, but I like to kind of keep a sort of a, a little bit of a uniform look. Using Panzer Ace's Light Rust, slightly watered down, I start to highlight the uh, the chestnut coloured horse, trying to focus on the sort of upper areas of the muscles and sort of the hind quarters and just areas where there's slightly less in shadow because the contrast paint has already done its shading um, in the other areas and you can use it as a bit of a map to see where to highlight. Now using the P3 paint Men Off White, which is a sort of just bit of an off-white colour. Um, I do the same for the sandy coloured horse, uh, again just focusing on the areas where the contrast paint hasn't settled and using that as a bit of a map to where to highlight. Okay so now I'm going to use snake bite leather and I'm going to paint in all of the reins and leather straps that are across the horse harness. Um, I try to not let the paint pool on this and to keep my brush wet as I dip it into the contrast paint because so it just flows off of the brush a little bit easier. It doesn't matter if a little bit goes over the edges, it will just look like shading and you can always tidy it up a little bit later on which I frequently do. Okay, using Darko Flesh, I'm going to paint the muzzle of the horse, and this is just something that I that I've started doing. I've been doing it now for a couple of years, and it, I find it just adds a little bit of texture to the horse. Flesh Terror is red now for the saddle cloth on the Lord character. It's a light this, it's a nice rich red. And then using Ultramarines Blue, just to contrast it with the red, I uh, paint the saddle cloth on the other horse. Moving on now, it's time to work on that really nice cloak on the Lord and I use a mix of Skeleton Horde and Contrast Technical Medium uh, to water it down and just let that sort of run all over the cloak and then I, uh, I try to pick up the excess as much as possible um, and that's just to give a nice base coat and we'll work this up to a nice sort of off-white. 
For the servant, I decided to look quite good in black robe, so I go to uh, black template and I paint in the sort of the main sort of robe or habit um, that's at the front. These guys are sort of a military orders knights, so they do have that look, sort of priestly look about them. Using Vallejo's aluminium, I now uh, paint in all of the chainmail on all of the characters. This paint can be quite runny, so I find it best to not overload the brush and to uh, basically put a little blob on and then apply it to the miniature and then work that out into sort of the various areas around it. Next up, I'm going back to the cloak and I'm using the Scale 75 Paint White Sands. Now, you do need to give this a good, good shake before using it. Um, and I just start to sort of highlight all of the raised areas on the cloak. It's got a bit of translucency to it, this paint, so it should pick up that nice sort of warm tea colour underneath that we've got the cloak. And essentially what I do is I just keep on adding, you know, a little bit more on um, and sort of just pulling those colours out. Using Evil Sun Scarlet, I highlight the saddle cloth, leaving the area under the leg in shadow. Now I'm going to use Snake Bite Leather just to uh, to paint in that strap that's coming across the top of the cloak, and then, but therefore, running around over his chest. And this is where the shield will attach to later. Right, now, Wildwood is another really nice paint. I water it down quite a bit, and I thought it would make quite a nice sort of a brown robe for this guy, so I just fill in all of the areas that I didn't hit with the black making sure to pick up excess paint. Now, another colour I really like is the Nighthaunt Gloom from Citadel, and I thought this guy would look quite nice in a blue tunic, make him kind of colourful compared to his servant. So I put the Nighthaunt Gloom all over this chap's tunic, making sure really hard not to get any sort of spread out onto the horse or anything else that I've painted. While that's drying, I use snake bite leather again, and I start painting in all of the straps on the, uh, the guy who's mounting his horse making sure again not to sort of spread any onto the, the metal work that we've already base coated. Once this is done, I decided that he, he could have a nice red tunic as well. So I used Flesh Tear as red again because it wasn't a big area and I thought the red would just, just stand out on what could otherwise be a fairly sort of dull looking sort of character once I've got all the washes on. So the red will just give him a, a nice point of interest. Okay, moving on, I go back to the uh, the tunic now that that's dry, and using Nighthawk Gloom mixed with a little bit of Ulf One Grey, also from Citadel, um, I just start to highlight up the tunic, and basically what I do is I start adding in a little bit more Ulf One Grey. It's mo it's basically 50 paint to 50 water, um, and you can really really start to pick these out now doing a three to one mix so all one gray three parts and one part night horn gloom this is the extreme highlight for uh, for the uh, the tunic so you can pick out all of these nice folds and creases in the cloth using evil sun scarlet go back and just give some extreme highlights to the tunic on the mounting miniature Now the standard bearer, I'm going to use Dreadful Fissage uh, mixed with some contrast medium and just go over his uh, his arm which is uh, in a sling. He's also got a bandage around his head so I'm going to hit that. And that's because I've already got the cloak which has got quite a creamy feel to it so I thought this would be a bit of a different white. Now Dark Reaper is a great paint for highlighting black um, or I find it is. It gives it sort of a bluey black texture um, so I use that quite liberally to pick out the highlights where I put the Black Templar down before. Moving on, uh, I use snake bite leather and I paint in all the straps here. And I seem to do the belts last. Some people do them first, but I always tend to do the belts after I've, uh, I've painted in everything else on the miniature to do with clothing.
Now with the mounted miniature, I just use wild wood and I paint in his, his boots and um, the lower parts of his legs. These are going to be obscured anyway on the base, but this is just a nice colour just to, uh, to get that work done. Now I'm going to uh, do exactly the same and use um, aluminium and just make sure I've got everything painted in on the uh, the horseman and just make sure that all of the chainmail and everything are done. Same with the helmet on the standard bearer. Now using Retributor Armour, which is a nice base gold, I paint in all of the horse harness decorations. Um, these would have been quite colourful, it's also partly a show of wealth as well. So I just go around the horse and paint all of these in, and also anything that's uh, that's on the rider himself, um, and also when it comes to um, the swords and the guards and any pommels and things like that, belt buckles especially. Now I'm going to use uh, Plague Bearer Flesh, actually this is pl Flayed One Flesh rather, um, to uh, to paint in the uh, the standard and I'll be going over this with a wash just to give it sort of a nice freshly cut look. Now I use uh, Army Painter's Strong Tone and I put that li liberally over all areas of metalwork. I try very very hard not to let it pull too much um, and you need to give this a really really good shake before you use it um, otherwise it tends to dry a bit gloss. In this case, I don't really want to get it on any other areas we've done already, so just try and keep it on the metalwork. Now using Seraphim Sipia, that's a Citadel wash, I just go over that banner pole. Now I noticed at this point that everything um, was looking alright so um, just being a little bit paranoid I gave everything a quick blast with the Colorforge matte varnish just to seal in all of the, the paintwork we've done already because it already built up a lot of layers. Now using Ulf 1 Grey I base coat all the areas of flesh because it's uh, going to be time to get on with all the faces and hands and everything. I also use it to base coat the centers of the shield. Um, now, as you can see, I'd already given these a bit of a coat of uh, strong tone, and that's because I'd done the metal work on them. I just forgot to film that part. Um, but because I'll be using little big men transfers on this, I find they work based over a sort of off-white undercoat, and all one gray is perfect for that. Now it's time to go back to the flesh areas and I like to use the Citadel Contrast Paint Darko Flesh to do all of this just because it gives quite high contrast. So I just go over all of the hands, all the facial areas and try very hard not to get it to splash onto anything that we've already done. Beards and hair and that I can sort of re-base coat later. Once that's dry I use Kislev Flesh and I water this down about 50-50 and I just start to pick out the highlights on the fingers, the hands, the brows and the cheeks. I just use some Ulf One Grey just to dot in the beard and the moustache again and then I come back with Flayed One Flesh and just do some water it down and just do some extreme highlights on the brow, the nose and sort of the upper parts of the cheeks. Okay, so next up I'm going to use Gore Grunter Fur because it's a sort of a nice sort of, sort of orangey brown colour and paint in this chap's beard and hair, just being very careful not to uh, go onto the flesh areas we've just done. This chap I thought would look quite good as a blonde, so I'm using Nasdrag Yellow because it just gives a really, really good, nice base to everything. Um, and then later on when I do some of the dry brushing, that will uh, sort of get rid of that bright yellowness that it has at the moment and make it sort of a bit more of a sort of a sort of a greyish blonde. Now moving on, I want to do some blood and gore, so I make it mix a little bit of Blood Angels Red with Gore Grunter Fur, which kind of it gives me a nice sort of dark, bloody mix. And I just do a few dots on the bandage, but don't overdo it. Now I used a Dark Star Paint Bray Gold for a lot of my highlights, so I use that to highlight the cross on this chap's chest and all of the things where we'd put the Retributor Gold earlier. I just add a small dot of this Braid Gold just to make it stand out. 
Morn Van Brown is my go-to brown for dry brushing and a bit as, like when you're doing highlights, I add this to areas where it's going to be a little bit dustier when there's been a little bit more build up, so the bottom of the cloaks and tunics and uh, sort of the underside of the horses. Now that's done, I'm going back to an old favourite, which is uh, Deck Tan from Vallejo, and I do a very light dry brush over the entire model. That will just pick out all of the extreme highlights. Um, it will give the idea that things are a bit worn and torn, and that's what I wanted from this command group. So of a crusader who's been going for quite a while, you know, he's travelled over a lot of Europe, and he's into the Holy Land. He's got dusty, he's tired, but he's still got his loyal servants with him. Um, who are basically keeping him going on this long journey. Um, I just find that this helps tie everything together. Now it's the time that people don't like, but I use uh, Iron Rack Skin and I dot in the uh, the white of the eyes on the uh, on the rider, on the chap handing up the uh, the helmet, and also the chap who's mounting. And then also don't forget to do the horse as well. And then I use a little dot of Abaddon Black to do the pupil. Now it's time to work on the shields and I've built up quite a sort of store of shield designs and flags across all my projects but I decided I just wanted some typical designs for this so I thought the chap on the horse could have this sort of nice black cross on, on his shield. Now I'm using little big men studios transfers and these shields I should have said are actually Vitrix shields and that's because I have absolutely loads of them so I didn't see the need to print those off and use them however if you do get the files from Reconquered Designs they do come with shields as well. So I've been very careful, I cut around the edge of the transfer and um, cut out the banner as well. And what you do is you just peel off this uh, this backing and it, you stick it face down. You do this uh, onto a piece of paper for the flag and for the shield you di directly put the sticky side down over the shield. Now once this is securely on you just use uh, a bit of uh, water on, I use an old brush and uh, you paint that all over it, um, let that soak in for a couple of minutes and then the backing should peel straight off of both the transfers on the shields and the flag. Using a piece of kitchen towel, I'll dab this dry just to make sure there's no air bubbles or anything sort of moving around where I don't want it to. I put the uh, the flag aside to dry because you've got to wait for the, the paper underneath to, uh, to dry all the way through. And once it has done, you can cut it out. Now, I chose this flag because I liked the really long tapering look and thought that as a guy standing still, we could sort of not fold it around him, but it would be a little bit easier to pose. What I do before we start to apply this, if you've seen my video on making flags, and I'll, I'll leave a link below, I paint the back of the flag, and I'm using deck tan to do this because it looks a sort of parchmenty or sort of off-coloured tapestry colour. Then using PVA glue, I just paint one side of the flag, trying to spread out all the glue and just leaving a little bit more in the middle. Bend that around the flagpole, line everything up, and then I just start scrunching it up. And as this one was quite long and tapering, I start bending it in to the figure itself. And this will all dry very, very quickly. And then you'll be left with something that looked a little bit like this. And I was really pleased with how the flag came out and the way it was hanging. Now, it, this wasn't a particularly long job to do. Um, I just applied the, trans, uh, sorry, the shields to the models with a little blob of super glue. Um, and then they're ready to mount onto the base. Now, I've done a, base, a completely separate basing tutorial, and it's the same method again. There's a link down below for that. I just added a few flowers. And as there was so much going on on the base um, in terms of the characters, I thought it would be simpler just to have that quite plain. And here is the finished product. So as you can see, we've got the uh, the servant handing the helmet up to his, his beloved lord who maybe they're about to go out on another mission or he's about to mount a charge. Behind him, one of his loyal retainers is mounting his horse. And I quite like on this base that you could look at it from any angle and there's something going on. You've got the guy getting on the horse. There's a different focal point wherever you look and I consider that sort of thematically um, a bit of a win and uh, that's not always the case when it comes to a command base you sometimes have all your guys at the front I certainly do and then you look at it from another angle oh, I can't really see anything however in this case I was really really pleased with how this came out and this might be one of my favorite command bases that I've done probably my favorite that I've done for the Crusades 
and here he is so you can see as he pops around on the turntable um it's a, a fairly straightforward process but as i said this was requested by quite a lot of people and as i had the footage and i initially wasn't going to do anything with it and then i thought you know what let's put it together it's taken quite a while to put together um but i hope that it's been helpful and that you guys have all enjoyed this as i say there will be a paint list down below and at the end of the video there'll be some photos as normal um anyway let me know what you think of the command base and the models i really Really, really like the reconquer models um, there are a lot of really really nice designs on there especially if you're doing um, sort of this period even if you're doing some 1066 stuff um, and you were doing some things for England you would be able to find some bits and bobs in here I find that these serve my needs perfectly for my project um, and I'd be very very tempted uh, to pick this up and do a saga force if I didn't already have a saga force um, going um, the models themselves were very very easy to print they come pre-supported um, if you go on there you can also see you can also get them in 15 mil um, and this is just one of the benefits of 3d printing it was very very easy just to realize I needed another command base go and select the models and um, just get them going now if you join the reconquer designs patreon uh, which I think is about eight or nine dollars a month then you will get monthly uh, models um, sent to you directly via patreon which you can either print or get printed now if you don't have a 3d printer um, to get this stuff that don't worry he does sell commercial licenses and I'll leave a link down below to uh, Grey Green Customs who went up before I had a 3D printer is who I went to to get all of my prints and uh, Graham over there does a fantastic job um, and you can quite easily get hold of some of these. Anyway, as I say, thank you um, for sitting through this video. I hope you guys enjoy it. Um, it was a lot of fun to put together i do enjoy doing the painting videos um but if there is anything you want to see or that you'd like to know how i how i do it and i didn't cover it in this video then just let me know down below in the comments anyway i hope you guys all keep well enjoy the photos and i will see you all again soon thank you